you know, there are a couple of animals that figure in these motivational speaker speeches to get people going and to get them to think out of the box and to overcome their limitations. One is uh, this object lesson of the elephant. Elephant is um, famously powerful. Uh, and in order for civilized people to harness that power, especially in Southeast Asia, I suppose, we don't have a lot of elephants in the United States. The, they've devised certain techniques for training elephants. But let's just say, we're, let's consider an elephant in the circus. They start with this baby elephant, they tie him off to a stake, and they use a rope, you know, about this big around. No matter how the elephant pulls and pulls and pulls at the stake, it can't get itself free from the stake. So as the elephant grows, and matures and it's always tied off to the stake um, they it eventually learns that it can't break that rope it, and it gives up it only pulls for so long and eventually it stops trying to bust free well it's obvious you know it's an obvious story about us that's thus the object lesson in a motivational talk is that an elephant although hugely powerful able to tear down the whole circus, rip down tents, destroy human beings, tear them limb from limb, throw them around the room. They don't. They don't escape. They don't try to do anything because they have learned helplessness. They have learned that they can only do the certain tricks that they've been taught and uh, they, they no longer try to break free. So you see that there's an obvious analogy there we'll get back to, or a metaphor for us. Um, fleas are a similar story in those motivational talks. You know, you've got this flea circus, and you have to wonder, how do they train fleas to, let's say, you know, make a merry-go-round round or pull a chariot or go through hoops or whatever it is that they have fleas do in a, in a flea circus? Well, the way they do it is they just put the fleas in a jar. Uh, within a few hours, the fleas bang their heads against the lid of the jar. They eventually give up. They learn that, you know, the headache isn't worth it. And so then you can take the lid off the jar. Apparently, I haven't done this. And the fleas won't try to escape. So uh, they've been adequately trained to do nothing. Now, the, the way the circus comes in is... Um, the fleas really develop sort of neurotic behaviors because they no longer can jump whatever the, the, it would be the equivalent of me jumping to the top of like a 30 or 40 story building i think um they can no longer jump this incredible height and so uh they, they gave up right it's another learned helplessness thing it's not worth the headache literally so the flea stops and so that they they diverge their 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 efforts into little, you know, they might run little circles or they might run in a straight line or they might do small hops, you know, but they'll have certain uh, idiosyncratic movements that they diffuse an energy that is built in them. The energy is there to jump, you know, this high. And instead they, they diffuse the energy into these smaller, strange movements. And what they do is they'll say, well, oh, look at this. I got a flea that walks in circles. So they hook him up to a little sort of a merry-go-round or something, and it pulls it round and round. It looks like the flea is doing it by design. The flea is just on automatic pilot, just running in circles. They just happen to design a task for the flea to use its ability that way. Same with all the other tricks that they train a flea to do. They don't really train fleas. They devise instruments that will use the flea's neurotic reactions. So again, these are these two stories that are told uh, that are supposed to instruct us how to um, think out of the box, uh, escape from our box, escape from our bondage, uh, you know, be the be all that we can be. Interesting, interesting you know, phrase used for the army, be all that you can be, you know, by joining the army, which is the most, you know, regimented sort of situation. And then people can, within the, those, those confines, if you fit 
those confines. You know, if you want to do the things that the Army asks you to do, yes, you can be all that you can be within those parameters. And, uh, but you, you know, you have to kind of want to go that way in the first place, or you better not join the Army. So, uh, so it's, that's a little bit like the fleas, where the Army exists as you go through certain things, you follow certain orders, you go through certain drills, be all that you can be. And some people, you know, if you if we've been trained to, you know, bang our heads up against the an arbitrary ceiling, and eventually we give up and just, you know, go through the rote uh, motions of living in our lives. And it's nice when somebody gives us something to do. Great, I love to file, you know, or I love to do, you know, work in um, whatever Excel and columns, and or I love to do. Um, you know, I love to tap on the keyboard and, and move pigments around and do, let's say, illustrations on a computer. All these different kinds of tricks, tasks that are unique to our society. And all of those tasks contribute to the society. In other words, the entire society is built out of tasks that fulfill the, you know, in a sense, I know I'm not being particularly kind, but the neurotic needs of people who have been stifled or stymied or stilted into certain behaviors. Uh, some people fall out, you know, the ones that, you know, for all, you know, I mean, all the geniuses that live under the viaduct sort of a thing, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but there is something to it is if you cannot find a place, if you can't find a pattern that suits your quote unquote, your kind of neurotic need to express in a certain way. I, I want to sing torch songs in a bar. You know, my thing was I wanted to uh, make people happy by drawing pictures, you know, so I would, you know, as an example, I mean, literally would go about it that way. It's not like there was this accident where I would draw something and people say, wow, Phil, that's really nice. I got strokes. I quickly learned that if I put a hat on like draw a picture of my grandmother's budgie and you know, or her parakeet or whatever and i put a little hat on it um everybody would say that is so cute and i would get big strokes for the massive amount of creativity it takes to put a hat on a bird and i i really took that i'm going to say it neurosis neurotic need for strokes neurotic need for approval i took it all the way out and uh ended up being a renderer and just getting paid for it you know i mean it's like i would you know I, and and my i would shine when people said wow phil you're great you know you really do a beautiful job of drawing and all this other kind of stuff i came in with it i, I you know i mean it's true that it took a certain amount of practice and stuff but it's just what i did and and it was the culture at large that determined what my options were you know, I mean, what are your options? You're going to go to your graphics, you're going to do illustration, you do paperback covers, you're going to, do, you know, I did architectural illustration, which, which tied in an architectural education. But these are very narrow confines in a sophisticated, high technology, highly organized uh, civilization kind of a setting. Um, and all of it precludes me knowing myself or any of us knowing who we are, or what we are. So that the whole issue of the elephant and the flea is the superficial, quick story about think outside the box. You know what big elephant that you are? You're tied off with a rope. Realize your power. Go do Tony Robbins and uh, unleash the beast, you know, and just rip that rope out and pull that stake and throw it aside and march through this life and be the thing that you were destined to be. Maybe a photographer instead of an illustrator or maybe a, a, a torch singer instead of someone singing in the church choir or maybe, uh, maybe a, a, a chef with his own restaurant instead of a line cook in some other setting or or working in a mcdonald's you know bust out you know i mean really you know sort of knock yourself out well as you can see we only have available to us the options that are supporting the society that we have it's just the way it is we've got this high tech organ or organized successful society and the effort 
to for the elephant to break that i'm going to get inside the elephant's body and for the elephant to break that rope the first thing he pulls on the rope and he goes i can't do this i can't do this and when he tries to bust it every every shred every ounce every nickel's worth of resistance that the rope gives the elephant tells him that he's going to fail so he almost has to the elephant you or i have to get into almost a delusional like a hallucination of power in order to break free and then when you do if you can break free you go back and go hey maybe i wasn't tied off in the first place maybe maybe i didn't break the rope you know or in the case of the 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 flea if if you've trained yourself not to jump and you you know you're, you can easily jump let's say you know two and a half feet in the air and instead you've been trained to get a headache against the lid and so you don't do that anymore the the flea then says to itself jumping you know it it, it cringes right it cringes with that jump it's like i can't do this it's almost like it the the flea has to relearn some form of masochism to jump outside of its learned helplessness we go through this you know it's like and so i for the purpose of this talk i'm not really sure that it's a great idea because when the flea jumps that high you know it's like as they say in Japan, you know, the tallest nail gets hit the hardest. So, uh, you know, if that's if that's where this goes, that by you cutting loose, uh, you're going to uh, procure the abuses of the system that is designed that wants you on your treadmill. Now, the other thing about this is these. The, OK, the system has um, there are these common elements to the abuse. Number one, containment. The elephant with its containment, confinement, they, uh, they, they put these, element, uh, these elephants in tight, tight circumstances, either tied up with ropes so that they can't move their legs when they're babies, or when they're, they're older, they're just confined with huge logs. And inside of this container, very, very tight, nowhere to go. It's almost just the size of their body. A bunch of guys come in and constantly yell and hit them with just sticks and boards and things and just constantly irritating the elephant, hitting him on the legs and yelling, yelling, yelling. They create this, this mayhem around the elephant so that his mind is just totally confused and that uh, and, and he's the whole time trying to get away and they've got this, plus they're starving the ele elephant. They starve them so that they're weaker because they could probably break those logs that are this big around. They're weaker, and, and so that the elephant uh, gives up. The, the idea is to drive the elephant towards giving up. Uh, 1984 did this, you know, read 1984, the, the scene in the end where, you know, whatever the, whatever the guy is, he's holding up his hands and he's saying, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? And, he, and the guy's supposed to see five fingers, the guy's holding up four, something like that. The idea is, at what point do you see what, the system wants you to see your, in other words, your perceptual mechanism actually vision creates a hallucination because, um, the pain of not seeing the hallucination is so great that you finally live in a hallucination of, you know, I see rewards. Oh, we've done it. You know, it's a, what is a reward to sit at your desk for eight hours? It's a reward to sit there for eight hours, 12 hours, whatever. Is it a reward to work 80 hours a week? Is it a reward, you know, to do any of that stuff? Is it even a, is it a reward to get unemployment? Is it a reward to, you know, get food stamps and, 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 or live under the viaduct and, and go to the Red Door Church and get your food there? Is that a reward? Well, the thing is, the system has been set up so that there's always rewards in the places where you are supporting the system it, that and that has to do with you showing up at the church for free meals or it has to do with working eight hour 80 hours a week in a real estate office you find that rewarding why the money the the what it can afford you whatever we have been conditioned like creatures you know i sat in a 
Jiffy Loop one time and, and was listening to a couple of people talking about training their dogs, it made me cringe because I thought, oh God, that's me. You know, I mean, just, you know, I'm just a trained animal in a way. So, so what do you say about this? In, in, the, in the motivational sense, you want to say, bust out, be your authentic self, be the nature photographer instead of the paperback painter or something. In, knowing, in other words, there's nowhere to go. We don't have anywhere to go in this thing. Uh, the society itself is a reflection of all of these things. So that let's say you do dedicate a certain amount of time learning a certain form of, let's say, masochism to break your chains, you know, and you find out, oh, I'm, I'm powerful enough to do this thing. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, okay? I'm, you know, it's, it's heroic. And, it, and, and I'd say, well, okay, let's just say it's a good idea. The point is having accomplished breaking bonds doesn't necessarily mean you end up anywhere wonderful. You know, in a lot of ways, it can be out of the frying pan and into the fire because now you have freed yourself of all social uh, guidance, all the social guardrails are, have now become sort of irrelevant or uh, arbitrary. So you set your own guardrails. What are you going to set your guardrails with? What, where are you getting those guardrails? You're just getting it from the material that was planted in your head in the first place. Now you can be cross-cultural. You can say, well, I'm going to go to India. I'm going to, you know, that's, that was my gig. I was going to, you know, after all this stuff, I went through all this garbage and I thought, man, I'm going to go sit by the Ganges and, and pour water back and forth in little cups and say chants or something like that. And maybe, maybe memorize the yoga sutras in Sanskrit or something like that. It's just more activities, doing more stuff. And because I, what, stick myself in, a, in, a, in an alien environment, suddenly that improves the situation. So, uh, so I'm going to say maybe it doesn't even matter if you cut loose. It doesn't matter. Uh, so what do you do? So what do we do? And I'm going to say, and I, and I really, to be honest with you, this is my problem. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, I'd say it's our problem. We're in this situation. Um, we're going to have to heal. You know, we're going to have to find healthier patterns more fruitful patterns of organization. You know, you know, I mean, people give the idea of you can go gardening, you know, and that at least puts you in touch with the earth. I'm not crazy about gardening, but then I haven't given it a, a big effort. I let my wife do that. You know, I'm just like, I let her go garden and I try to stay away from it. Um, so, and because my, my gardening would be haphazard. I would just do it in a very perfunctory way. I'd throw some seeds on the ground and hope they took. And if they did, I would eat the stuff. And if it didn't, I don't know, I'd go to the grocery store anyway. Uh, in other words, I don't have my survival instincts tapped into it. Um, so what do you do? There's gardening, there's phys physical things, there's getting in touch with nature. That's a good thing. Again, not a guaranteed, not a slam dunk that you're gonna find yourself if you go to nature. Because um, you could just do a photo op of seeing yourself in nature. You know, saw these girls, uh, they were literally, I'm not kidding you, they were playing Rocky Mountain High by John Denver in a hammock doing selfies at Artist Point up in the Flagstaff Mountain, you know, the, up, up near Flagstaff Mountain in Boulder, Colorado. You know, other people wanted to see the pretty view, but these girls with their social media sites and their soundtrack of Colorado Mountain, Rocky Mountain High, they're going to get a bunch of thumbs up. Awesome view. I wish I was there. I don't know what people are going to say. Uh, were they there? Or were they just on their social media page? This is the problem we have. Uh, and it's the problem with all of us. Uh, you know, to what extent am I just participating and just really uh, pigeonholing myself back into another constricted environment uh, where I feel comfortable again? So I will say this, and I'll, I'll bring this to a close because all I've done is state the problem. I'm not even sure if I did it that well, right? Um, let's just say Maybe it's more important to know thyself, the dictum 
over the top of the, uh, what was it, the, um, the oracle at Delphi. So it says, know thyself. It's very important. I would say, um, I've said it before, self-honesty, I'm, I'm almost convinced that self-honesty is tantamount to enlightenment of the highest order. To find out what my real neuroses are, what my real tendencies are, what, what my fear walls are, and, and what my grandiosity might be, and what my false humility is, these kinds of things. Uh, Self-study, I'd say, is, is critical. And, and far more critical, I'd say, than breaking the rope on the elephant. Uh, it, 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 breaking the rope, the elephant rope can be, or, or getting out of the, the, the flea lid, those could be aspects of self-study. Um, but I'm going to say that there's, there's that, and the, you know, then there's the other side of this. To wrap it up with something that's nicer is Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras, and I don't, I don't know what sutra it is exactly, says... The purpose of this life is so that this self can have experiences. Now, I, speaking to you, I am not the self. The self is an inner light. It's been called, quote unquote, the bright. In other words, if there is a brightness, that is the self shining through an egoic shell. I do believe this. I think that that's true. And I'm going to go into this maybe someplace else. Actually, this whole video was going to be about this idea of the friend being the relationship of my egoic self, uh, my egoic shell and the inner self as two really separate entities. Uh, I have a certain narrative that's culturally conditioned, but there's a self and there's a, an engine within that actually um, is not conditioned, doesn't speak a language, is really has access to infinite intelligence. It almost can manipulate time space within certain uh, uh, limits or laws, I guess, laws more than limits. It can manipulate time space to accomplish things. So I think learning about this self, know thyself, and learning about this friend is really the critical piece for the elephant to break his rope or the, the flea to restore his jumping ability. Uh, that's, that's really what we have to do. And that until then, I don't know that motivational talks offer all that much substantive or qualitative change. So we'll look for another one. I'm going to see if I can do one on on uh, the other one I would like to do that's related is the um, the nature of the body mind. You know, what is the what's the kind of the nature of this thing that does anything that has a certain energy quality in it? Thank you very much. See you soon.